In this screencast, we're going to be looking at converting our equations into something called deviation variable format. Now, when performing a stability analysis, which is uh, later on in this topic, or using Laplace transforms, you must use variables in something called deviation form. That is, with the previous steady state subtractive off, subtracted off. So in this example, let y of t be my process output. This could be like our product stream temperature. Um, U of t being a process input, like feed concentration. If your process is operating at steady state, let y bar and u bar represent the previous steady state values before some sort of input change or disturbance happens. Right? So typically in this class, at time t equals 0, we'll say some input changes or some set point changes or some disturbance uh, insults the system. So in order to um, convert things into deviation variables, we take our normal variable and subtract off the previous steady state. Then we have our deviation variable left over, which we um, denote by putting a little hat on top of our variable. Now note that our deviation variables are, are functions of time, just like our standard variable, but the, the, the constant steady state value, y bar, has been subtracted off. u hat will also um, be a deviation variable, so um, because our, in general, our input will change in time. And so we have to say we'll subtract off the previous value of our input. So let's take a look at an example for this. Actually, before we get to this example, there is one thing that I want to say here, and that is this analysis, or this process, or this procedure, only works for linear equations. It will not work for nonlinear differential equations. Okay, so if we go to our example, so if you take a look at this thermal mixer, and let's say that it's operating at steady state. So at time t equals zero, the inlet temperature, T1, makes a step change from 25 degrees C to 30 degrees C at t equals zero. So what we want to do is we want to convert the energy balance equation into deviation variable format. The steady state value of the outlet temperature is T bar, and the steady state value of the inlet of the temperature of the inlet stream is T1 bar. So this is over here. Um, we were going to call this T1 bar, and we're going to call this initially at T bar, but then after um, time T equals zero, that temperature will change. Okay, although we're not going to solve the differential equation, all we're going to do in this example is put it into deviation variable format. So we saw from before that the equation for this process is as follows. So if we define our variables, t hat is equal to t minus t bar, and t1 hat equals t1 minus t1 bar, then substitute those into the equation, what we find is this. And actually, I should point out that this is how you put things into deviation variable format. You just define your variable, your two deviation variables, and you substitute those into your equation. So our mass times ddt of, now we originally had this regular t value, and so if we rearrange this equation, what we get is t hat plus t bar. Those are your, um, when you add those two together, you get your original t is equal to f1, your flow rate of stream one, times t1 hat plus t bar, t1 bar, plus f2 t2 minus the sum of your two outlet flow rates, which your inlet two inlet flow rates, which is your outlet flow rate, times t hat plus t bar, our original steady state. Okay, so if we simplify this and rearrange, what we get is mass m times the time derivative of t hat plus mass times the time derivative of t bar is equal to f1 t hat 1 plus, sorry, minus the sum f1 plus f2 times t hat. 
So I'm collecting the hat variables here, and then I'm going to put the, all the bar variables next. So plus F1 T1 bar plus F2 T2. Now that one doesn't have a bar, but it doesn't change in time either, so it's just some constant T2 minus F1 plus F2 times T bar. Now, if you look at these terms right here, these were the previous steady state. So if I, if I go back to my original differential equation, which is up here, and I put in a bar here and a bar there, that signifies the previous steady state. And when the previous steady state um, occurs, of course, since it's a steady state, that time derivative is equal to zero, which means this grouping here is equal to zero. In that case, that grouping is right here, so this whole group is just equal to zero and drops out of our equation. So therefore, what we have in the end is our mass m. Oh, and the last thing I forgot to say is that this guy is of course the time derivative of a constant and equal to zero. So in the end what we have is our mass m times d t hat d time equals to f1 t hat 1 or t1 hat minus f1 plus f2 t hat or d t hat dt is equal to 1 over tau p kp t hat 1 minus t hat where in this particular case what we have is that tau p is equal to our mass m over f1 plus f2 and our process um, gain kp is equal to f1 over f1 plus f2. So all I've done here is I've taken our differential equation, which is in our, our variables that we are um, familiar with, like where we have mass and flow rates here, and I've converted into this differential equation, which can also, of course, be converted into standard form tau p dt hat dt plus t hat is equal to kp times t1 hat. So that can be put into standard form as well. But um, the, the identity of what this time constant is and what this process gain is um, becomes apparent when you convert it from this form into this form. And so we know what the solution is because we've seen that in a previous example. And so a lot of times these um, differential equations just have a particular kind of form and you can just solve them for what you already know. Okay, now note the last thing is that the only variables, only the variables that change with time remain in the deviation variable form. That is, T2 drops out because that one was the one that was constant over time.